Hello and welcome to the Purple Army Podcast in association with Goldstone Wealth Management. It's Tuesday the 6th of September 2016. I am Ross McGregor and joining me this week, Stephen McLernan, Graham Thompson and Jennifer Shaw. In this week's show we'll chat with Tina Taylor of the Cats Whiskers podcast. We'll discuss the first penalty box nominations of the new season. First though, we had a chat about the game against Fife on Sunday night. Joined this week again by Graham Thompson. How are you, Graham? I'm good, thanks, Ross. Jennifer, how are you? Very well, thank you. And last but not least, Stephen. How are you, Stephen? Hello. Uh, we're going to start off, uh, I think, this week with, uh, by thanking everyone that, that certainly I've spoken to people personally, and some people have messaged us all on various platforms uh, for all the, all the kind words of support that we've been given since the show last week, and it's good to know. Uh, there, there are lots of people uh, supporting us. Uh, I'd also like to offer congratulations to Lee Sweeney and Alexander or Xander Rennie on their wedding yesterday at the Glen Hill Hotel. Uh, I think the clan must have lost about at least 100 from their attendance last night. And it's also the reason that I wasn't at the game, so I need you guys to help me out. <laughs> um, but I want to wish both of them the, all the best for the future. Um, but you know, moving on to quickly to the clan game, obviously clan lost 4-3 in the first 3-3 three three overtime. First period, 10 minutes, just over 10 minutes. Peacock from Keith, after winning the face-off, he's managed to, to slot at home. Uh, 15 minutes and 41 into the game, Wharton turns the puck over to Finucci. Uh, he finds Stockton in the high slot, and he's absolutely buried that one. Um, 18 minutes, pit short-handed, Rob Shaber in the blue line, and he's strong in the puck, backhanding into the net. And before the period was up, Fife got the equaliser. Tenel from Dingle, it's pretty poor D again on that goal. Second period... Uh, I think I've been told, certainly guys, it was all clan. Fife got two shots the whole period. Third period, there was a goal each. Just around about the 50 minute mark, there was a power play goal from Turon shot and Dingle got the rebound and turned it in. And at 53-52, Baker picks up the puck from the face-off and backhands it in to equalise. Over time, I've seen that goal. Levitt tried to jump the puck and basically failed. And that left Flyers with a 2-1 and one game over. What was the game like, Graham? Um, obviously, it's been a, the things I'm hearing back. It's been a pretty exciting game, uh, but Clan were all over Fife. I think the shots. Well, I was, I was debating that today. We, I think it was forty-one to twenty-five. I believe. Um, uh, I've, I've got Clan. forty-one. I've got forty-one to twenty-nine. Apparently, the, the game sheet's wrong. Is oh, that yeah. exclusive for you? <laughs> so, we're, so we're even better than that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, well, not so good for uh, Zajkowski, who instead of facing 29s only faced 25 yeah. and lost 21 or saved 21 of them. So, yeah, yeah. anyway, um, it was a good game. Uh, it was one of these ones that you would normally say, well, for the neutral, that would have been a great game uh, or, or for the victors. Um, you know, I've got to be honest with you. I, I For me, this was like action replay of so many games from last season. Um, and if I was to summarise the game, then I would say it was very like a 15-16 game, um, dominating uh, our opponents, certainly in the first period going into the second period, but just not killing them off, allowing them back into the game, um, going to overtime and um, and losing out. So it was it was a brand new season, but also familiar, a storyline. Um, I think the team played overall pretty, you know, it played they played well. Um, created lots of chances, had lots of looks on goal, couldn't bury it enough, obviously. Um, I, I suppose from, from from my point of view, the biggest issue is that nobody at the moment is really standing out. I think we've got good players. Um, there's definitely talent there. There's grittiness there. Um, nobody in particular is causing any concerns, but I'm waiting for somebody to be a standout. I think the nearest we've got to that so far... Uh, certainly Rose Hill's been very impressive and obviously it was good to see him back last night but uh, probably Scott Pitt um, uh, most of all has is, is kind of risen above uh, the, the rest of the team at this stage but nobody really is standing out at this moment and I dare say it'll come it's you know first competitive game of the season so I'm not unduly concerned but so far just not quite seeing it and yeah uh, it's what we are talking about last, uh, last week as well 
uh, defensive errors um, leading to chances for the opposition and them taking those chances, whereas we are we are not taking our chances right now. So, yeah, overall, good game, very entertaining. Three on three overtime is immense, absolutely fantastic. Love it. Just a shame about the result, but that was definitely uh, definitely a good move by the league to introduce that. So, no complaints there. And Stephen, I was watching Twitter where there was at the wedding, and you've seen a lot of Fife fans moaning about Toby, but five power plays for both teams, you know, it makes it seem uh, as if it was pretty evenly evenly reft. And the difference being that Fife took one of their chances, we didn't take any, and that's one of the things that we battered on about last year. And I think it's one thing that distinguishes teams that are at the top of the league and challenging than from teams that are maybe in the middle of the pack and below. The special teams are in the top two or three in the league. We battered on about it last year. It's very, very early days. But what was your thoughts on, on that? Was that one of the turning points in the game, the special teams? Uh, definitely. If you've got that many power play chances, you need to get some goals out of it. And it wasn't quite as bad as last season because we could actually get the puck into the defensive zone this time. So that's heartening, I guess. But yeah, you just need to do better. We were trying to hold off and shots were getting blocked and not enough movement in front and when you've got a body the size of Rose Hill uh, in front of the goals you need to try and get more on the goalie because it's hard to see around them the guy's the guy's massive but yeah it was just one of those frustrating nights in the power play again and it, I suppose the penalty kill has been better in the last few weeks we, we conceded one but we got a short handed one as well so I suppose that sort of uh, evens it out in the, the penalty kill but yeah, early days, you know, we've we've still got players, uh, a, a D-man especially, to come in. I'm hoping that he can maybe stabilise defence a wee bit because, as you, you touched on, it was defensive blunders that led to most of the goals uh, last night. Well, all the goals, went, really. So, yeah, get Baldwin in. He's a, he's a big, uh, big stay-at-home D-man, which I, I, th- I think we're missing, a, a big mobile stay-at-home D-man because Hendrix is good, he's just a little bit slow. So I'm hoping Baldwin's a bit... A bit um, a bit faster and able to clear things up for us. And Jennifer Shane Owen, from what I was seeing on Twitter as well, was having a, a, a good game. Um, a lot of people saying he might have been the difference. Was that your reading of it? No, Shane, Shane Owen definitely won them the game. He was absolutely, absolutely outstanding. He was pluck, plucking pucks out of air that I've no idea how he was able to see them. Um, but he, was, I think most of our power plays kind of came in the second and... We were moving the puck and we were taking the shot, but he was saving absolutely everything. So he's been, a, a unfortunately, a really good pickup for, for Fife. Hmm. I've got to mention, I mean, you, you said it, Stephen Rosehill. That's, I mean, we always thought he was going to be a fan favourite just because of the type of player he is. The fact that he's come back to play with a cage and that injury is just going to cement that for him, isn't it? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, he's he's a good player. You know, he's, he's shown that... He's not just here to be play the the good enforcer role. He's I don't think he got any penalty minutes last night, and he was always trying to to strive forward. And he's got such a long reach that it's, some opposition players are finding it difficult to try and get round him without him getting the, the stick in the way. And he, I thought he played really well last night. I, I would have had him down as one of the potential uh, man in the match nominees, but I got a good shift from him and uh, good to see him back and not have any long term damage. Uh, to stop him playing anyway. Sure, and Graham, the Brit line, I mean, obviously I, I didn't see the game. Were they getting plenty of minutes or were they, and were they doing the job they were paid to do? They were doing their job, but they weren't getting that much ice time, to be fair. Um, I'd like to see a bit more of them, but when they were on the ice, no complaints. Uh, and, you know, again, <clears throat> I was talking earlier about standout players. I mean, Boydie's certainly making an impression early on, putting himself about very quick. Uh, we, we haven't spoken about the game against Dundee on Thursday. We don't particularly need to, but Boyd, he was excellent that night, um, and uh, you know he's carrying on that form into the into the league into the season proper. So yeah, the Brit line is, is going to be good. I, I just obviously I hope that we that we use it um, uh, on a regular basis because that that's now our grinding line. Um, that was our third line last year, if you like. So it's important that we use that fourth line because that's going to be a, a should be a major part of our uh, of our strategy moving forward. So yeah, no complaints. Just would like to see a bit more of it last night. Jennifer, you're a Fife fan. You've got to be happy with the start you've had. You've challenged cup games, but you've beaten Belfast at home and you've come down to Brayhead and you've taken the first points of the season from Brayhead. Well, given Fife's performance last night, I definitely would be worried. They've they've got an exceptional team, and obviously, you know what it's like. The 
during the off season when you see them picking up bits from here, there, and everywhere. But from what I saw last night, it did definitely worked. I was going to. We've not done this yet, and I know it's maybe a wee bit unfair, but we did it last year, and I asked everybody to pick out, you know, a standout player. Um, I think I got. I think I got it right. I picked McKeever last year. Graham, you weren't on that programme. You didn't get to pick. I can't remember who you picked, Stephen. Do you remember? Um, I think I went with Keith. I? I can't remember. I think you yeah, did, you actually. Did. You went with Keith, yeah. Yeah. So this year, I'm going to ask the same thing again. I'm going to ask everybody individually, you know, who's just who's the player you think is going to be? You not always get a standout player, but who's the guy you think is maybe going to surprise us? Who's the guy you think is the one that we need to keep our eye on? I, I mean, everybody will probably automatically kind of fans will think Rosehill. I'm going to try and... St- I'll, I'll pick first. I'll try and get away from him. I'm going to actually see Becker. I think Matt Becker could well end up being our top scorer or there or thereabouts anyway. I, I've been very impressed with what I've seen from him so far, albeit it's been very short uh, in terms of ice time, what I've seen. But then we picked last year without actually having seen any games, I think, if I remember correctly. So, Graham, you know, is there a name that you're, you're going to throw out there? Uh, I like Becker, I have to say, but I will go for somebody different. I'm I'm going to say Corey Cowick. I, I like the look of him. I think when he comes on his game, he's going to be a he's going to be a good player for us. So, uh, yeah, he would be he would be my pick. Uh, big big body, um, uh, plenty of skill, um, good speed. I think I think he's going to do well for us. Stephen, I was going to say Becker as well. That's my answer taken. Um, I think from what you're I've seen, I can't have Becker as well. No, no, no just in the, in the, the, for having different people. Uh, I think from what I've seen of Wharton so far, and uh, that sort of playing the sort of offensive D-man role, I think he's really good. And I think that when, I know he had a, a mistake last night, but I think when we've got a more settled D and the D-lines are, are sorted out, I think he'll be really impressive. And especially in the power play, he, he, something you didn't mention is he hit the crossbar in overtime just a minute before Fife uh, scored the winner. So I think, yeah, he'll he'll be a big player for us. And Jennifer, what about yourself? Uh, I'm definitely going to pick Scott Pitt, especially after last night. Mm. Um, he seems to have this new, very, very hungry, that puck is mine attitude. Nobody else is going to get it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, even his... It was Scott Pitt that scored the short-handed goal, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, very, it very was, strong in the puck when he it scored it as well. It was lovely. It was so, so good to watch. That was that was a good moment. But, no, he he's, he's back. He's doing what he's meant to be doing, but he just seems to have gone that little bit extra. So here's hoping he carries that on the rest of the season. You know, he came he came into the the league uh, season last year after being in Australia, but he was ready to go. He, he's not played in the summer this year, but he seems ready to go <laughs> the same as he did last year. And, you know, we think maybe he's benefited from that extra rest, I don't know. But yeah, Scott Pitt's a good shout as well. So, there we go. What about the one that everybody talks about, and it's always the goaltender. Um, we're going to do the penalty box next, but I'm kind of going to steal a wee bit from the penalty box. Somebody like Mike Mitchell, it was that Chalky Boy has asked, you know, as a nomination, he's put netty haters. There always seems to be the group of people, not always the same people, but some group of people always seem to take a disliking to the netminder, no matter who he is. From what I was led to believe, Zykowski made a few amazing saves last night. Uh, what was your reading of the guy, Stephen? Yeah, I thought he played well. It must have been really difficult for him because he had nothing to do for long periods of the game. And we'd, we'd need to ask Chris about that, how. Uh, a goalie's mindset changes through the game and he's not faced a shot for a wee while and how he keeps himself on top of things because it's probably really difficult but yeah he had a few really good saves um, defensive errors and turnovers didn't help you know it's, it's, it's I wouldn't fault him for any of the goals despite the fact I've seen plenty of people saying it was all at fault for all four of them but um, that'll be the net yeah. heaters <laughs> uh, that'll be the net heaters yeah. Uh, yeah he had a good game and you know it's, it's one of the first uh competitive match as you said you know it's there, there's no, no concerns about him so far he had one I think it was on a, a power play he had one wonder save that he managed to I've no idea how he got it it was like Shane Owen all night he just managed to get across the goal really quickly and, and get a, a pad to it or a glove to it and yeah that's what you want for your goalie just that gives you a chance to to win the match and I think he, he definitely held up his part of the bargain last night so far, so good as far as, as far as I can tell. Uh, the only other thing I think we need to cover about the game, you know, everybody was talking about Rose Hill Hendricks coming over and and Kiwik, and we were just going to gun it up according to a lot of teams and according to Fife. It just doesn't hasn't worked out like that at all so far. I mean, I think the presence of these guys is keeping other teams honest. And there was an instant. Uh, 